It's important to note that that constitution in front of me is British by Tuck, commanded by Tuck right there. He's one of the only two constitutions with us that day that we were chasing these Spanish. Um, he was actively working the entire time. And um, the other um, one was Galleon, who was not actively working the entire time. Uh, proof of that is he's, uh, he's in the back right now. Look back right here, and you're going to see back there positive if you have to. But the other constitution's at back, and he had, was in the back ever since um, the start of the chase, which began just off Carlisle. Um, almost the entire time, he was not even at full sail. He was at half-mast, or slow. And he stayed behind us no matter what we did or where we went. And he was not actively engaging in the fighting. The battle ends right here. Uh, it started because Tuck was able to run out ahead and um, run them down and get them into a battle. Uh, we were able to catch up, but it was a bad tag, and the only reason why we did it is because uh, they were getting away, and um, they would have to either A, come out, and we would get a better tag, or B, stay inside. But regardless, we kept them from uh, attacking any unsuspecting people at Jamaica, and we thought it was a good move. We're going to exit right here, and we're going to wait for them. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, right outside the battle here, uh, if you look at my screen, you'll see Galleon and the Constitution right there. Alright, now if you follow him, you'll see that he is in motion, and he is heading north. Tuck right there on the other Constitution is holding position, and Galleon's going to head out north and uh, sit by Captain Veen, uh, who will be uh, the further mo furthest most north uh, of us. We are holding position right outside the battle, waiting for the Spanish to come out, hopefully. Uh, or at the very least, we're, we're planning to wait them out. Alright, now at this point, I am going to hold position, and uh, it's going to get very boring. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen, uh, basically, until um, 16 minutes after. So 13 minutes from now, roughly, uh, we'll, um, we'll begin to break up. And if you want, you can fast forward to that. But I do recommend, um, if you wish, to get the full view on everyone's uh, out here, or a better view of deduction and all that stuff. Um, at uh, 5 02, 5 minutes and 2 seconds after, um, I will be clicking on the Santisma uh, by Edward John Smith, commanded by, and uh, Captain Hardy, who's out in the distance with the um, surprise. Uh, I, I've already pointed out where Tuck and where Galleon are and their um, constitutions, and by deduction, that leaves out Captain Veen in the third rate. Um, at 16 after, we're, we'll, uh, we'll proceed south, back towards Jamaica, and from there, I'll be doing more looking around, and you'll be able to see uh, who's going where and what's going on. So go ahead and uh, um, fast forward to just after, you know, about 16 minutes, and uh, we'll go from there.
Okay, right here, uh, we're going full sail, and we are heading back to Jamaica. We've decided to break up the group. We figured that at this point, if they had not popped out, that they had uh, likely logged off in the uh, post screen. And since they were doing nothing but running away, we assumed that they would have no uh, inclination of coming out anytime soon. So we figured if they were not popping out now, they weren't going to pop out for a while. So we're heading back, breaking up the fleet. Uh, if you watch behind me, um, uh, Galleon stays uh, in the rear, and, and here in a couple minutes you'll see that he was actually staying at, once again not at full sail. Um, uh, about five minutes prior, uh, we were all talking, and Galleon had sent a message in uh, well, Spanish, and l later turned out to be French, something about ten minutes, and we um, were thinking later on, we were thinking that that was possibly a message to the Spanish. Uh, that was that was meant to them and accidentally sent to us and at the time we didn't think anything of it I chalked up everything at this point. I chalked up everything to be in coincidence and just assumed that uh, uh, That he wasn't a spy that anything weird wasn't going on and about the 18 minute mark roughly in just under a minute um, I will have a change of heart and my reasoning is played out there. So um, uh, Wait for the 18 minute keep watching Okay, at this point, I was looking around, as you saw, if you're watching uh, that, I was going back and checking out uh, Galley and Edward and all them, and I was thinking about uh, all that had happened, and uh, the message from Galley in Spanish, or uh, what turned out to be French. So I messaged um, uh, Edward right here that I think, I'm not sure, I think he might be a spy, um, and uh, if possible, uh, I didn't want to give him away or accuse him, so uh, he's like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I'm going to go back north, and I'm going to wait. I might go a little bit east, because I was worried they might have tracked east, but um, I was sure at this point that uh, what was going on wasn't, uh, you know, it was over our head, and I was pretty sure that they were going to show up. Uh, as soon as we got out of visual range and they thought they were safe, I was sure that the moment that had happened, that they were going to pop out and they were going to head right back to Jamaica. I felt that they were determined. And as you pass through here, um, or as I pass through here, you'll notice how Galleon and Captain Veen are right in front of me. So as you can see, Captain or um, Galleon is still uh, staying behind us, as he always has. North would be the most sturdy position. And as you can see, Galleon right there is not does not have his full sails up. He is insisting on staying back and watching us from a distance and being the closest one uh, to have been able to see them if they popped out. And I was sure he was communicating. Um, uh, Edward John, who was the um, group leader, he asked if uh, he should kick him. And I was like, no, not yet. Um, let's just make sure. I also messaged, private message, Captain Veen, and uh, he agreed. Uh, with everything I was saying, and uh, Tuck, I didn't get a chance to message Tuck. Tuck kept going, but luckily, um, John Smith and Veen and uh, Hardy and all them stopped. Now, of course, uh, Galleon stopped too, and um, what's going to happen here is um, I'm going to hit a little far, a little further north and east, and I'm going to stop, and I'm going to hold position and wait. And um, at that whole time, Galleon stays right where he is and he's watching us the whole time so um... just watch what happens here oh yeah and uh, one more thing um... i didn't private message just like tuck i didn't private message uh... galleon so he didn't know that uh, i was accusing him as far as i knew no one else had messaged him uh... so uh, he just stopped he just stayed with the group and stopped uh, just as I was expecting him. I, I even kind of expected that he might come back after me, but, uh, you know, north. But 
the since the main group of the ship, the main bulk of our uh, ships were further south, I figured he was staying with them. If I was further north, and and they they jumped out and jumped me, I would have no chance. And I figured he might have known that, so that's that's why I chalked it up to him staying with the fleet. Why he did instead of coming after me. Alright, this is my uh, hold spot. I've uh, chose here. Uh, from here I'd be able to see pretty far west and pretty far east and pretty far north. I had a view of the, um, almost had basically had a view of the battle, the, the battle area, and uh, every area around where they might try to uh, ambush unless they headed like northwest and doubled back around. Either way, I figured this would be a good spot. where things get interesting. Uh, not even two minutes later, they popped out. And uh, here they were, um, tracking back south, southwestward, and they are heading back to Jamaica. All of, of these Spanish ships, exactly as I had predicted, based on my assumption that Galleon was a spy and feeding them uh, coordinates and, and what we were doing. He told them that we were for far south, that we were all moving away, and so they jumped out, and um, they headed right back for Jamaica. Um, this is why we assumed he was a spy. And I still do believe he is a spy. You'll, right after that, right there, you'll notice how Galleon was kicked from the group. Uh, not at my order. Uh, everybody else was certain, just as I was, that he was a spy. They went on the chat first and messaged. And you can talk to any one of these guys. Edward John Smith, Captain Veen, Hardy, Tuck, all of them will vouch for what I've seen. And um, they assume just as much as I did. And you see right here, as soon as <laughs> the Spanish saw us, they headed back north. They, they jumped out of the post screen at the perfect time when we could no longer see them. They headed down south because they couldn't see us. Once they got uh, inside of us, they immediately turned around. So they expected us to be back in Jamaica by now, split up. Now, how would they have had this thought if um, uh, they had not been given some information? Uh, you know, they, they came out with absolutely no opposition right at the perfect time and headed down south. And, it, and it's an interesting to point out that once all this was done, because right after this, this is what's going to happen. We're going to chase them uh, far northwest, all the way from, you know, uh, right off the northeast coast of Jamaica, all the way up to Portillo Port. Um, it's on the southwest, um, so southern end of Cuba. And w they hide in that port and we blockade them, and that's how the video is going to end. But basically all the important stuff is up till this point. This is the 
the main issue right here. And when this was over, when we did teleport back and we finally disbanded, this, these same four ships came back down to Jamaica and her and and got a couple um, victims. So they're they're attacking us, uh, and they they would have only have come back and were that determined, they would have only have come back and did what they did just now if they they knew we were we were moving, we were gone, and they could jump us. I mean, if they thought that we were close by still. They would just keep running. That's all they do. They had no interest to actually fight. They only wanted to um, jump small, low-ranking people. And uh, with that guy feeding them information, you know, it's pretty obvious what happened here. Furthermore, he is French. You know, I hate to be, um, you know, racist or whatever, but you know, the French and the English don't really like each other. It, it it's kind of strange seeing a French guy, you know, uh, on the British side. And, um, of course, there are exceptions that prove the rule and all that stuff. But, um, he, he seemed not to help us at all. Uh, he seemed, um, you know, right after he was kicked from the group, you know, he had teleported out not moments later. Uh, if you go back and rewind it, you'll notice that he teleports out, that we talked about it. And, um, you know, it's strange that somebody with an innocent, you know, whatever would behave like that. They would teleport out and would leave and would immediately start talking shit. And, um, also, <laughs> go back to any of the times where I'm clicking on Galleon's name, and you will notice that, um, he is not assigned to a group. He is not assigned to a clan. And the issue that came out is when my clan leader told me that the Dogs Clan was upset that I had offended one of their members. And it's proof right here in this video that he was not actually a member of Dogs when the incident occurred. So either they're lying for him because he gave him some sob, sob story and they are kind of victims to this, or they are somehow involved in that they are somehow helping out the Spanish or whatever. But either way, it all seemed to fall in place. All the stuff would happen. He'd followed us, stayed behind us, never full mast, was always keeping tabs on us, never helping us, never within our group. Um, the Spanish knew, always knew where we are, where they had to go, how they had to get away from us, when to get out of the post battle. So I further submit that he is a spy and should be considered a spy. And at the very least, he is a mercenary spy, which means, yeah, he may or may not be loyal to Britain, uh, but, you know, he will do stuff on the side. You know, he, he will help any clan who might message him for money and do it. You know, who knows? But it, it's, you know, it's kind of a serious issue. And letting somebody go around and, and, and play people in other clans and do all this kind of stuff is a lie. And it should not be tolerated. This guy had told that, uh, told my clan leader that he had been with the, um, the Brits few, a few weeks and was loyal to them. Now, when I was sizing him up and trying to figure out uh, whether or not he was a spy... One of the things that I had determined is whether is he is a, whether he is attached to a clan. Once I saw that he wasn't attached to a clan, and that he was a commodore of rank, and he was only sailing in a constitution, I determined that he was very likely a spy. Someone who had done his ranking elsewhere, and within the past two to three weeks, couple weeks, a week, or whatever, uh, came to Britain with his rank, and and got up the money for a cheap constitution, which is easy to do, and then was out there right per right at the perfect time under a Spanish attack. Uh, you know, he was messaged, he came out there, and I mean, it, it all fit perfectly, uh, everything he did. And um, I was willing to completely believe he was not a spy and admit to falsely accusing him until those Spanish came out of the battle and headed back down south right at the perfect time. So go back and review. Um, review when I click on Ga um, Galleon and how he's not part of a clan. Review how I, when I clicked on Edward or Captain Veal or whatever, that they all have clan tags attached to them, uh, yet Galleon does not. But if you look at Galleon now in the game, you'll notice he has a clan tag of dogs, all capital D-O-G-S. So I don't know what's going on, but you know we, we got around a spy issue and now being accused 
of falsely accusing someone who almost got us killed and and got other people killed later on when they came back and attacked uh he he escaped the scene you know right at the perfect time and and, and didn't stand up for himself he didn't continue to help us you know so there he is he's a spy uh if you have any questions you know how to get a hold of me um yeah so uh hope they hear from you hope they hear that uh you agree with me and that yeah maybe you shouldn't have trusted him so uh, quickly dogs he might have sailed with you but obviously uh, you might have just been duped by him and I hope that's uh, PS or rewind to um, 1914 uh, in order to uh, see Galleon's tag it was uh, just one of the times that I clicked on his name and you can see that he is not attached to a clan so 19 minutes and 14 seconds Alright everyone, that is pretty much the video. The um, the rest of it um, is just the continuation of this chase, where we chased him down to uh, Portillo. Uh, thank you for watching, really appreciate it. I did not expect to have to make this video, um, but I did do hope that it shed some light. Um, one other thing, um, I caught, I went to Illavash the other day, maybe a day after the incident, and um, it was covered with French and Spanish. And uh, and they had just been the French had just been taking over that whole area right now. It's all blue, um, but uh, there was no one else. There were a couple British traders, but in the middle of all these uh, French and Spanish, there was a uh, a big lone victory, and commanding that lone victory was uh, a galleon galleon uh, who was commanding a victory. He had the clan tag dogs on him. So obviously it didn't take him long after that, after this incident, for him to become a, a member of DOGS. And he was sitting right outside El Vash amongst Spanish and French players. And the moment I popped out, he immediately sailed for and docked with El Vash. And I, I sat there and I waited a while, you know, so I could get back in case they tried to jump me. But I, I sat there waiting, maybe for a good 20, 30 minutes. Uh, to get a video of it, to get to see, you know, so I, I've seen him among these guys, and um, whether you believe it or not, I I do suggest that you are careful with him, because these forces are much stronger than the British, U.S., Swedish alliance at the moment. Uh, odds are, if you sail around with this guy, you run the big risk of getting jumped by these people. Wherever they are, I see him. So with that said, be careful. Uh, and hope to see you out there on the sea.